these canopies here, man, they built 60,000 square feet of these with four guys in about a month. All right, so I'm gonna do this video. I don't think I've ever done one like this. This is going to be a, a project update, a real estate project that I'm working on, and I just kind of want to share that with people. So. so with all of this information in mind, I went out and I found my next piece of land, which was this very, very ugly old industrial park in Fort Myers, Florida. All right, started construction. We can see some dirt piles over there they got from excavating holes. And we're gonna have, this is gonna be the last building to go up. We're gonna have a new drive connecting two different concrete pads here because we're gonna have a new building going that way. It's a beautiful Florida sunset. This project's come a long way. We've already redone this building in terms of painting it, getting it looking good. So here's the construction they've started. They've started setting these, digging these holes for footers. We're here December 2nd, the day before construction starts and we can see these holes for where the columns are going to go on an angle because that's the angle the customers are going to park at. These canopies here, man, they built 60,000 square feet of these with four guys in about a month. They dig a big hole in the ground. Let me see. You can see right here, they dig a big hole in the ground with a, with a mini excavator and they just set the post down in there and they just pour concrete around it and it is just a really fast process that they went through. It was $1.8 million for the land. It was already paved, which saved me a bunch of money. It had zero dollars of existing revenue. This site was completely vacant. We did $1.7 million of construction. We built nothing but covered RV storage on this property, these canopies right here. And in 2022, uh, we built it for 3.5 million and sold it for 6.2 million. Okay, so that really opened my eyes to, wow, there is a lot of interest, there's a lot of demand, there are serious buyers in the market for boat and RV storage facilities. We had around 14 different bids on that property, so there was a lot of interest in these property types. So I bought this property for a price tag of $1,700,000, okay? Now, that's what was existing. I wanted to come through and I had a plan the entrance to the property was right here. I had a plan to add a building here. I had a plan to add a building here, a building here, and a building here. Now when I say a building, what I really mean is just more RV canopies, okay? So these blue things, I was also gonna add another one all the way across right here. Now in total, all of these new buildings came out to one million eight hundred thousand dollars just so happens that's what it costs and this was sixty thousand square feet so these are rv canopies it cost me uh we'll just do it here thirty dollars a square foot okay to build these now this came out to a total cost of 3.5 million dollars okay i went to a bank i didn't have 3.5 million dollars said mr banker what will you give me they said, we'll give you 80%, okay, which came out to $2.8 million. Now, here's how that loan was structured, okay? That left us with needing to come up with $700,000, whoops, $700,000 of equity. So here's how a construction loan works. When you're going to buy this land for $1.7 million, you have not yet spent the full $3.5 million. In fact, you haven't even spent half of it, right? But you have to put your $700,000 in first. You have to put that money in at closing, and then the bank, There's a, so if we take the 1.7 I had to pay for the land, uh, we put in 700,000, and the bank off their loan gave us a million. And then they had another $1.8 million Okay, sitting for this construction money. And as I spent the money, as I purchased the materials for the building, the bank would pay directly for that. That money didn't come out of my pocket. So even though we spent 1.8 million in construction, we got a construction loan on it, and we didn't have to pay any more than the $700,000. Now again, I didn't have the $700,000, so we went out and we raised money from investors for the $700,000, and that's how we funded this project. Now, the first 12 months on this loan were interest only, 
And again, we'd only pay interest on the money that we had drawn, right? Money you drawn. So the first time I bought this land, I drew a million dollars and I had 1.8 million more to draw off of that loan. Every time I got money off the loan, that was what we call a loan draw. Fast forward, I built this place. We had some problems with insurance, which is why I wanted to turn around and sell this place. And here's what we ended up doing, okay? We put this property up for sale. We wanted to sell it because interest rates or uh, because of the insurance issue. But at that time, there was another property just down the road. Let's see, my property versus, we'll call this the comp. Okay, they had 99, not dollars, 99,000 square feet. Okay, and they ended up selling for $10,200,000. Okay, and this was um, about two miles away from my property, okay? But at the time, they were full. When they went to sell, they were full, okay? My property, and also this was during a low interest rate time period. Now, we were hoping to get $10 million, but that's not what ended up happening, because we went to sell ours, it was only about 20% full, okay, because we had just opened it. Interest rates were rising, and that's pretty much the full story, okay? Um, now on this one, they also had a 1031 buyer. Somebody's motivation to pay more money being in a 1031 is definitely a real thing. So we didn't end up having a 1031 buyer. We ended up selling this deal for $6.2 million, okay? We ended up selling the deal for $6.2 million. And if you remember, we had the bank note, the mortgage, uh, at two, 2.8 million. I actually came in a little bit under budget on the construction, saved a little bit of money there, owed a little bit less, but we'll call it 2.8. And then at the end of the day, that means 6.2 million minus 2.8 million, okay? How much money was generated off of that sale as general proceeds? So if you did your math right, the proceeds that came off of this were 3,400,000. Now, again, remember, we invested, we invested $700,000 from investors and we turned that into $3.4 million. Okay, so we profited. What is the difference? This, this is a return of capital, including the investment. So that means we profited. How much did we profit? 3.4 million minus 700,000 is we profited $2.7 million dollars of profit, okay? And this was in 24 months. Now again, all of this, I would love to have held this property. I think one day it'd be worth 10 million or more dollars. It was a bad time to sell, but I had insurance problems. I had insurance problems, which is what drove me to sell it. And sometimes taking chips off the table when you're not achieving the maximum price is something that's wise to do as an investor before you face further risks down the road. So it's always smart to think about not necessarily maximizing your profits, but taking wins where you can take wins. Off of this, I made over $400,000. My investors turned $700,000. Uh, into over $2 million of uh, profits for them. And that is how a development deal breaks down. If you have any questions about any of this, I, I, I'd love to help you guys. This was a project that was difficult to put together, but easy conceptually to do. Anybody could do these kinds of deals if you know what you're looking for and you know how to put them together. That is the key. Okay, is knowing how to put the deal together after you found a great deal. So follow along for more. If you have any questions, drop them below. And as always, I'm here for you. If you haven't read this book, Skip the Flip, Secrets 1% Know About Real Estate Investing, it contains everything about how I knew this property would generate massive profits before I ever invested a single dollar into it. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share with a friend, be great.